What's up guys, this is Steven with Virgin Cow again. This is gonna be the second video of discussions with dad in death metal. Death metal. <laughs> so death. the first the first conversation, you know, I, I, I have some ideas of things I want to talk about and, and sometimes the conversation just takes a different turn. <laughs> so Yeah, we we chase a lot of rabbits. Yeah, so what I wanna start out with this song. I mean, with this this video is going to be a band called Crimson Thorn, and uh, this is the one of the, their first album called Unearthed. Oh, uh, can I say that, yeah, man? Their yeah. picture on the back, you need to show that. Yeah, that, that's the picture of them. I guess yeah, it's tilted down a little bit. Right, so they, tilted yeah, down go. a little bit. That's Crimson Thorn. That's the that, singer, and that, he plays bass. That, that looks like a couple of wannabes, and and uh, they're trying to be bad. I didn't say that. They're trying to be bad. <laughs> they look like in the picture they're trying to be bad. Uh -huh. That they're super duper serious, but uh, you know they may be serious about their rock heavy, whatever jamming uh, music. But uh, they're not as bad as they they want to be. They're a bunch of want to be bad guys. <laughs> I can introduce you <laughs> to some bad guys. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's the song I want to play. Let's see. This is going to be called Ignorant Self. Ignorant Self. I'm going to read the words while it plays because you can't understand it. I like the music. <laughs> Jay, how many how many sets of drums do you believe that guy goes through in a month? How many times does he have to replace the heads on him? That dude. Hey, I, no, hey, no, I so I wanna, know, let me say something about I, that. I want to know who the drummer is. I think it's this guy. Oh. I'm pretty sure it's this guy. Now, Ooh, I'm going to say something about that band. I saw them at Cornerstone. It was either like 97 or 98. I think it was one of them. Yeah. And they played... And the, the first song that they played, the drummer busted the snare head. Yeah, I can and, understand and, that. And they had to stop the song, and they had to, they were trying to find some other drums to replace it. And one guy in the audience hollered out, he said, it's just a punk band playing after you, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, <laughs> everybody cracked up. And, uh... So yeah, he goes through some drum heads, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. So read read some of those lyrics. Let's listen to some of those. Okay. Lyrics. The ignorant self is what we're listening to. Yeah. Um I mean if you read the lyrics, uh you can understand. It says I know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Ignorance misleads fetters and deceives men. A deceived heart turns from God. And the eyes and ears are shut, having the understanding darkened, alienated from God, thorough, ig well, they, it's supposed to be through ignorance, but they got it said thorough, uh, because of the blindness of the heart, yet he stands at the door and knocks, receive him. Unconscious uh, deterioration of man the worshipers of themselves reject God and know uh, and know not they are miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Is that a no? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, so it, it's you know how the Bible talks about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Yes. And then it also says 
though we see him now we see him through a glass darkly and so even as Christians we don't see Christ in his full fullness you know we're not mm. we're not we don't know no. Christ in his fullness right and but can you imagine if if we as Christians as believers if we can't see Christ in his fullness how much dark do you think the minds are of non-believers well it, it's they're very dark and that's the responsibility of a Christian all Christians to be the light of the uh, to let the light of the world shine through them and we are to be the light we are uh, people don't like the, this term but we are little Jesus is yep. supposed to be uh, and his light is supposed to be shining through us and uh, that's why at times uh, people uh, shy away or they turn away from uh, a true Christian when they walk in the, when those true Christians walk in the door now uh, but yeah we are to be the light of the world because we are the only Jesus that some people will see okay and this is heading in the direction I want to go in oh really so yes so I'm gonna I'm gonna preface it with this so uh, you said that we are supposed to be you know the word Christian was really when it first came when that word that term first came out it was in the it book was, of Acts. yes and it was actually a mock it was a derogatory term because it was it means little Christ yes and they were mocking Christians with that word saying oh you're just a little Christ it was it was to make fun of them yeah and now you said that some people when they walk in the door we're supposed to be the light of the world but too many people turn away from Christianity and from Christ because of they look to people as an example and not Jesus yes now here's something here this this is what I wanted to talk about I'm glad I'm glad this kind of went the direction I wanted to go in now you know I'm in snakes yes I got Steve snakes where I do the snake thing now the term and I, and I want to say this too and I, I got I kind of pistol and I do the pistol. yeah so if my own dad kills snakes knowing I'm in the snakes don't give him a five for that so <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to blame you a little bit, a little bit. No, you can't I'm going to blame you because as, <laughs> as a kid, you used to always tell me if it was a snake, it would have bit you. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that messed with my psyche a little bit. And so now I get all the snakes and put them in a cage. You're so being ashamed of yourself. You just killed a butterfly. <laughs> that wasn't my fault. Yes, it was. Anyway, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so because you told me if it was a snake, it'd bit you. You know, I think part that of my was like that was when up. you were looking for something and you couldn't find it. <laughs> right, but now, but you didn't look in the right place. You walked all the way me. around it. It stuck with me, and so you know, I want to put all the snakes in the cage so I know where they are. So, <laughs> let's. Let's talk about what we were just talking about because people use this term as a, not necessarily derogatory, but they use the term as a, kind of insulting. Uh, they say that some people are a snake in the grass. Yes, I've heard that. Okay, so let's, let's kind of bring in, let's talk about that and let's talk about how you have uh, let, well, we can use this term that some people use. Some people like this term. Some people disagree with it. So it's a little bit controversial. False converts. And the people that are in the church who not necessarily are, are, are planted. Now, I, I do believe there are some people, for lack of a better term, are planted by Satan in the church yes. to deceive people. The Bible yes. does talk about people yes. being deceived. Yes. Okay, but let's talk about those people and those false converts who are in the church and they're not doing what they're not necessarily they're not doing what they're supposed to do but they are they're they're deceiving they're like this song is talking about you're ignorant you don't know because as a Christian you're supposed to get into the word yes um, the word is your power source it's like yes. your life source and maybe you you read a scripture and that's how cults and and yes. other religions started they take yes. one scripture out of context yes. and they run with it so let's talk about snakes in the grass in the church hmm. 
Now, now before we know we were talking about, you but know, it's I'm gonna, Christian. I'm gonna say yeah. that there, there are people, and God tells us to uh, not to be uh, judgmental. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not their judge, mm -hmm. but God also tells us to be um, to judge the fruit. Exactly. That's the only way that we will know uh, a person who would be a snake in the grass in the church. Because you see their fruit. You see the vain and idle words that come out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because God's Word tells us to be edifiers and we don't like to do that. We like to be gossipers, not edifiers. Uh, but uh, it's our responsibility to uh, examine the fruit. Uh, and that's how, I, and I don't want to use the word judge, but that's the only way we can judge a person is by the fruit. Well, see, and there are snakes in the grass in the church. I believe they're planted there by Satan uh, to bring uh, discourse, bring disruption, to do everything that they can do to bring a pastor down. Uh, and I'll say this, uh, it happened to us. Uh, it brought us down. We knew that we were supposed to be there, but uh, when you get stabbed in the back so many times uh, God, God will, and God led us to leave I believe that a lot of people don't believe that God led us to leave uh, but yeah there's there's snakes in the church but I think the snakes in the church brings about uh, uh, a Jezebel spirit in the church and I believe that's what most of the snakes in the church are is the Jezebel spirit. And uh, unfortunately for us, we did not uh, understand uh, that until after we left. It was, uh, we knew there was a spirit in the church and uh, we sought God to uh, show it to us and it was never revealed. Uh, until we sat in a service and heard uh, a minister uh, ministering on a Jezebel spirit, and then we knew what it was. Yeah. So I, a lot of your snakes in the grass are a Jezebel spirit. Okay, so there were a lot of things that you threw out that I kind of, I kind of want to draw out just a little bit. Um, one of those is, you know, you're talking about a lot, of, and I hear this a lot, even in, in the church, and you hear a lot of, uh, non-believers, non-Christians say, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. Well, first of all, you don't want God to be the one to judge you. True. So, you know, the Bible says you should judge yourself. You should study to show yourself approved. Yes. And also make sure that you're in the faith. It right. says to judge yourself to make sure you're in the faith. But you talk about judging people. If you, I think you mentioned it in the other video. It may have been at lunch, but whatever. That if, if you see a tree there with apples on it, that's an apple tree. Yes. I'm not judging that tree by saying, look, that's an apple tree. No. I know it's an apple tree because of the fruit. Yes. So, but you're dealing naturally mm -hmm. versus spiritually. Mm -hmm. The God that we serve is a, uh, a just God, mm -hmm. and he's a uh, uh, righteous God. He wants people to be saved by his grace mm -hmm. but at the same time the scripture says that he will judge us in the end yeah that's where we will either hear well done thou good and faithful servant or uh, depart from me I never knew you mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so you're not you're supposed to love love people you don't have to like them Okay? You don't have to like what they do. But God says, love your neighbor as I sell. Mm -hmm. So, 
my deal is if you can't love your brother, you can't love uh, them as a neighbor, then uh, it's, it's really proof that you, that you don't love yourself. Okay, so what about, what are your thoughts on um, the scripture that says, stay away from the very appearance of evil and do not, um, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank here, it, it's not, um, oh goodness, I can't remember the other scripture, but it's it's saying, don't don't be friends with the world. There's there's a couple of scriptures that talk yeah. about not being friends with the world. Yeah. Now, I understand that doesn't mean because Christ, Jesus ate with sinners. Yes. And he calls us to go into the world and preach the gospel. Yes. So I'm not saying completely stay away. I mean, you know, don't right. go into the world. That's not what I'm getting at. But what I mean is being close friends with the world. I, I believe if you're close friends with the world, that's that's spiritual adultery. Yes. That's the way I look at that. And you're... you're I mean, if you're friends with the world, you're an enemy of God. Yes. And but I'm not saying don't go into that. No. And this is a we are of we are in the world, but we're, we're not, not of the world. Exactly. So the deception. Do you think? I'm trying to go and say my mind's going in several different directions. So the Bible that I mean, the, when it says. Do not stay away from the very appearance of evil and, and don't be friends with the world. Do you think, aside from the people that you know, we, because we do understand Satan has planted certain people in the church to deceive yes. people. What about the other people who just haven't had their minds renewed or they haven't been discipled? We were talking about discipleship in the other video. Haven't been discipled enough. And do you think some of that deception... Or that spiritual blindness comes because they don't study the word enough for themselves. Do you think it's they talking about those that are in the church or those that are not a part of it? Yes, those those that are in there. We're talking about snakes okay. in the grass in the church. Uh, Do you think that, some people that's spiritual ignorance? And God mm -hmm. tells us not to be ignorant of those things. Right. God tells us that uh, we aren't to be ignorant of the many devices yeah. and and a lot of things in life, but yet. We don't read. Our pastor last night said this. There are people who have read the entire Bible five, ten times, fifteen mm -hmm. times. And and all they do is read it. Mm -hmm. They're not comprehending anything. They're reading through it so fast. And his suggestion to us was slow down. Mm -hmm. Slow down and and read to understand the word there's so many people that choose it's a choice that they make to not understand well and that goes on and i'm not going to pull the song out uh, there's a band called living sacrifice and they have a song called spiritual anorexia yes and it goes along with that so you're basically uh, doing it to you. You've what? What? Is, there's a scripture that says uh, you deceive yourselves. I'm trying to remember what the first part of be it not says. deceived because God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. But there's one that says something about um, just if you if you do something. I can't remember. I wish I could remember now. But it's talking about deceiving yourself. And if yeah. you do something, yeah. or don't do. I can't yeah. remember the, the first yeah. part of it. But uh, so there. Do you think? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I can't put into words where my thoughts are going, but I'm, I'm talking about, so I'm trying to, but like, just like in the natural, there's different kinds of snakes. So in the church, do you think there, you've got the people, the snakes in the grass that are planted by Satan, but do you think there are other people who, I don't want to say they become snakes. I'm not trying to talk like that, but because of their own ignorance, because of their uh, laziness, we were talking about laziness earlier, because they don't have that discipline, because they haven't made those choices to build themselves up spiritually they've become deceived and they can lead other people astray yes so they, you can have different kinds different yes. variations yes. of that yeah because er, every person in the church is uh, on a different level spiritually mm -hmm. okay uh, some people know the word, 
but they don't know the word. Mm -hmm. They know what the Bible says, but they don't practice it. Mm -hmm. So there's another one. Yeah. Because if if they get around somebody who is on a lower level per se, and, and that goes back to sanctification, because sanctification is a step. It's uh, I, I preached on it one Sunday and had a, a ladder in the church that it is a step-by-step -step process. It is not a a poof, I'm there. Mm -hmm. It's a step-by-step -step process. And if you if you become idle, then that can cause you, I believe, cause you to go down a few steps. Mm -hmm. But if I'm ignorant and I take and I find somebody that is less knowledgeable than I am, those are the ones that can be deceived. Mm -hmm. However, if you if they uh, are hanging out with a person who and I, I don't who is more spiritual mm -hmm. or more knowledgeable let's say more knowledgeable and has understanding it's not going to affect those people mm -hmm. but it's those people's responsibility to put the word and put knowledge and understanding into these people mm -hmm. and that's where we fail a lot of times because we don't say anything to them, uh, we don't, you know, God tells us uh, through his word that uh, his word is there uh, for correction as well. Well, a lot of people don't like correction. Yeah. Okay. But that's what it's for. Yeah. And I think there's a, uh, you see this in the world a lot too, but just society today, you have so many people who don't want to take responsibility for their kids True. so they, they just don't want to deal with them so they put them on drugs yes um, then they send them to school and they expect the teacher to not only yes. teach them but they expect the teacher to discipline them and raise their kids yes. because they just don't want to take responsibility so and and that's a problem too and that that's some of the other topics I want to get yeah. into later um, some just some problems with the world but let's look at in the church I don't want to say there's a fine line. I'm not trying to define the boundary lines. Right. But you have the responsibility of those pastors, teachers, evangelists, the people who, the elders in the church, yes. to teach those, to disciple those yes. newer people. But you also have the responsibility of the individual seeking God for himself. Yes. And I yes. think there's a problem there's there's disconnect there because you have the older people who may get prideful yes. they may think well you know I'm better than them I've moved beyond those yeah you have and that's I've moved beyond the basics you know they yes. get into that attitude and I'm beyond that so I don't I don't I'm not gonna stoop down to their level yes but you also have the other people who and and you can't I know you can't completely fault them because they don't know everything yet. The new Christians, the baby Christians. You know, the Bible talks about having the milk of the word and yes. the meat of the word. Yes. And so you have a new Christian. You can't expect a baby to get out in the car and drive. No. You got to teach it and you raise it up. So you can't fault that new Christian for that. No. But you also have, they have a personal responsibility to seek that out themselves. Yes. Because it's a personal relationship with Christ. So, um, what, what what are your thoughts on those disconnects there? How do how do we how do we bring things back together? We we have to the church as a whole uh, has got to take responsibility for the baby the baby Christians mm -hmm. and uh, knowing that uh, uh, an issue. May in the church may be you don't have the fivefold ministry there. I believe you got to have the fivefold ministry in the church. You right. have to have it because it's the fivefold ministry who is the is responsible for raising up those baby Christians. But you know you can't force it down them. But also as a baby Christian. Or any believer, 
when the pastor gets up there and is ministering the word, then I know when we first got spirit filled, I took notes in church. Yeah. And at the same time, I would during the week between services, I would go back and study that for myself. Mm -hmm. And we have to train and and teach and impress upon new Christians that hey, you need to do this. Mm -hmm. This is a part of your building process, but at the same time, uh, you know, how's the baby going to get the milk? Oh man, so we don't know what we mean. All right, so you're talking about the bere uh, you were talking about you can't have the blasphemy come in, and uh, you, you, can't you can't have you cannot continue to allow that in the church, and and it. Uh, Without correction, yeah, because so, that's bringing separation mm -hmm. in the church. Well, the other thing I wanted to bring up too was, you know, you had the Bereans, and I said the Bereans studied Scripture day and night, and they did that also because I, th I believe it was Paul that was preaching, and they wanted to prove, and they wanted to make sure that what Paul was preaching was truth. Yeah, and you know, people people miss that too. You yes. know what I mean? You have to have that discipline to study the yes. Scripture. If, and I heard, I can't remember who said this. We've been given our whole lives to study one book. Yes. And look at everything else that's out yes. there. There, You've got distractions out there. You've got so many different yes. things out there that the, that the enemy uses to pull. Yes. And is it is it a good thing or is it a God thing? That's that's something, you know, that a lot of people miss. Right. And well, it's, it's like our pastor last night, we were talking about, you know, the, the harvest. If you look at the scripture, uh, I think it's um, I think Galatians, if I'm not mistaken, it's Galatians, where the we lose hope, we lose in in gathering in the harvest, we lose. We grow weary at the end. We're out there the first, you know, three or four months. Man, we're out there shelling out uh, seed. We're, you know, what I'm saying. We're doing everything that that the gospel says, and and you know, and we're tr doing our best. But then, when when it's harvest time that's when the enemy comes in to distract because the enemy don't want you to gain that harvest because that harvest means you can do more the next season mm -hmm. so so God you know what I'm saying so we can't lose hope we can't lose uh, and grow weary uh, and do all these things uh, at the last minute you know what I'm saying so yeah, and something else I wanted to ask you about was um, modern technology. The way society is going now, everybody wants everything, you know. And then what's been something's been talked about for years is a microwave. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, everybody wants things now. They want yes. it right here, right now. And I see so many people in church. You mentioned taking notes in church, you know, and. And that's something I still do is I take notes. But so many people have their Bibles on their phones. And mm -hmm. they just skim through it and they look up. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a written Bible, I mean a, a, a book, a physical book, yeah. you can't take notes. You can't mark it up. You can't highlight. You can't... Uh, no, I almost see nobody with a, a journal or a notebook or something to take notes anymore. Because they feel like, well, I got my Bible on my phone. I got my Bible and, and, I, and here's, here's a problem too. Most people feel like they don't need to bring a Bible to church because they show it up on the screen. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't need the Bible. Mm -hmm. But that's your that's the but sword of I'll, the spirit. Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, I'm not going to knock that mm -hmm. because I can write those scriptures down and be taking notes, mm -hmm. and I don't have to flip pages. Mm -hmm. You understand what yeah, I'm saying? I can see that. Okay, okay. so that part of it is. Um, uh, 
you know that's a mm-hmm. that's a good thing mm-hmm. but at the same time um, when you get home yeah and I, I'll be honest with you at two o'clock in the morning three o'clock in the morning sometimes when I'm up I will I'll not it, just so I don't turn lights on and disturb the rest of the household I will use the Bible that's on my mm-hmm. phone. I'm not saying not use it as yeah. a tool, but I'm saying as society but, now, but they've, they've taken it, that a whole, yes. a whole. If I'm completely. studying, if I'm studying, I got my Bible. Mm-hmm. I've got a whole lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'll yep. have my concordance there, uh, and I'll you know uh, to find out what the Greek or the Hebrew word actually is, and we'll go. I'll go from there. But I'm not going to tote all that to church mm-hmm. because my deal is is the furtherance of the gospel within me is to do it when I get home mm-hmm. in the privacy of my own home. Yeah. Then, and only then, can I take it outside mm-hmm. the church and have it living on the inside of me to be able to give to somebody else. If it's not living in me, I can't give it to anybody. Right. And I, I think that's where, you know, you go to church, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yes. yourselves together. You go to church, the pastor brings a word for that church, for that congregation, but you take that, and then you take it, like you said, you take it home and you study that, you internalize that for yes. yourself. Yes. And you say, okay, God, what were you speaking to me yes. through that? What, yes. what do you have for me? You internalize that. You study that word that was given through your pastor, yes. through your leader, the person that God has placed over you. That leadership, you take what your leader, God has given your leader to you. You take it home. You study. That goes along with you sharpening your sword, studying study and show yourself, yourself approved. Right. And you're taking that and you're you're saying, okay, what does that do for me? And then once you do that, you're able to take that out to yes. the world and evangelize out yes. to the world. And that helps. That goes along with you being able to disciple uh, not only are yeah. you growing yourself but you're, you're discipling, discipling others. somebody else and that goes along with the death metal so you're when you do that you're crucifying that flesh yes. you're mortifying you're putting to death the more you study the word of god you're putting to death the deeds of us god says if you live out of the spirit you will not fulfill the deeds yes. of the flesh and so you're crucifying that you're you're putting that to death yes so you can live out of the spirit and you're allowing Christ to live out of you, in you, and then out of you. Yes. We're his hands and we're his yes. feet. Yes. So I agree with that. I, I, I'm planning on having more of these videos. I enjoyed it. Okay. I enjoyed it. Cool. Death, my love! <laughs> All right, guys. This is Stephen with Virgin Cow. And uh, like I said, I'm planning on having some more of these videos. I've got several topics I'd like to talk about. So uh, as long as my dad's cool with it, we'll I'm have cool. some more. All right. I'm cool. Cool. We're going to get him to a motorcycle church and really show him what the gospel's all about. <laughs> That's the metal I'm talking about. All right, guys. It's Stephen with Virgin Cow. We'll see you guys later.